Like, that's my favorite color, but that's just a lot of purple for my eyeballs. Welcome back to another episode of Wrestle Capsule, where you're going to be getting your weekly dose of pro wrestling talk. And I'm your host, B. So welcome back to the show. We're going to be talking about Wednesday Night Dynamite, and there are a few things I'm going to bring up on the Wrestle Capsule channel. So let's talk about this Jericho appreciation celebration that happened. It started off the Dynamite show, and the show was in Philadelphia, which happens to be my hometown, born and raised. So, yeah, you guys didn't ask about that. Overall, this segment was, it was all over the place. There were a few spots where, that were super funny. Um, the whole thing about, you know, they're not getting any pizza. Philly's not getting any pizza. And then, you know, Philadelphians, boo, because we love pizza. Philadelphians love pizza. I freaking love pizza. I know everyone loves pizza, but there's something about pizza for Philadelphians that is just close to the soul. So when you say that you're not gonna give us any pizza, those are fighting words. But either way, besides all the kind of back and forth between the wrestlers in the ring and the crowd, other than that, it was kind of like all over the place with this segment. What I liked about this segment was we get to see Daniel Garcia in the picture with his P Ring of Honor Pure Championship on his shoulder. And he, cause they're all, mind you, they're all dressed up in purple. The ring mat is purple. Like that's my favorite color, but that's just a lot of purple for my eyeballs. And Daniel Garcia, he was there with the Jericho Appreciation Society. And he, he just cuts off the celebration. He can't take it anymore. It's just team too much for him. He still is grappling with, is he a pro wrestler? Is he a sports entertainer? It was cool that Brian Danielson came out and was basically saying how, Daniel Garcia, you can either be with the Blackpool Combat Club or you can be with the Jericho Appreciation Society. You can train with us or you can train with them. You can do whatever you want. And the crowd's like, yeah. But Jericho's like, no, he's with me. He does whatever I say. And Daniel was like, uh, no, boo-boo, I do what I want. Of course, he didn't say no, boo-boo. That's, that's my words, not his, but I'm paraphrasing. So I was thinking that those two were gonna fight. And then you have Brian Danielson kind of like, there was this, no, there was like this thing where it was, oh, now we're gonna have a tag team match with Chris Jericho and Sammy Guevara versus Daniel Garcia and Brian Danielson. And I'm like, Okay, that would be cool for them four to be in a match together. Okay, but then it was kind of like, uh, I don't know about that. And then next thing you know, Brian Danielson is like, well, I'ma fight you, Daddy Magic. I, I just call him Daddy Magic. I know his name is Matt, but I call him Daddy Magic. So he's like, how about we fight tonight? Daddy Magic, you and me. And this is, this is Brian saying, and I'm just like, okay. So that leads into, those two having a match, the first match of the night. And I'm just like, huh? One thing I do want to mention, and I want this to be in discussion uh, in the comment section. Um, Angela Parker, cool hand, Ange, cool hand Angela Parker. He says, A -E, he's, he's addressing the fans and he's like, AEW Galaxy, appreciate us. And I'm like, they've said this before. This is not the first time that they've said this phrase, but maybe it's just me actually catching on to it. And I'm sure other people have realized it and wrestling YouTubers have talked about it, but I want to talk about it. Um, I don't know about you, but that sounds like Roman Reigns, WWE Universe, acknowledge me. This is the stuff that I'm talking about. This is the weird stuff that Tony Khan allows 
his wrestlers to do. I don't know if the wrestlers have come up with this or if Tony's like put that in there. I don't know because you know, as we all know, Tony's in charge of everything, everything and everything in AEW. He does the writing, he does the match, like he does he does everything. Everything, everything. To have Cool Hand Ange say, AEW Galaxy, appreciate us. I get it also, it is the Jericho Appreciation Society. So to play on that, but sorry, I don't think about JAS when he said that. I was thinking about Roman Reigns, the tribal chief. I hate that though. I hate that we still see Tony Khan, and I'm just gonna put it on Tony Khan because he is the CEO, he's the owner of AEW, he's the head of creative control, all that stuff. I hate seeing him in his pro like seeing his product mirror certain things of WWE. The first match of the night was a match between Brian Danielson versus Daddy Magic Matt Menard. One thing that I did not like about this match, other than the fact that how it came about within that whole weird pizza purple segment, I'm just gonna call it the pizza purple Jericho segment. Besides that, even before Cool Hand Angelo Parker came to help his boy Matt Menard and interfere with the match, they were making like the match, it was, it just looked. It was just weird because it was making it look like Brian was struggling to beat Matt Menard, which is so out of nowhere. Now I can see if you're building him, which they're not. As far as I'm concerned, as far as what I've been seeing in the product lately, they have like, Tony does not have any intention unless he changes his mind and proves me wrong. I don't see him having any intention of building Cool Hand Ange or Daddy Magic. Like, I don't I don't see that. So to have him beating him up even before Angelo Parker got involved, I was just like, you're making Brian Danielson look smaller than he actually is. And also what was weird about this match was instead of Claudio Castagnoli wanting to have a rematch with Chris Jericho because he lost his title to Jericho last week. Instead of that, he comes out to help his boy, Brian Danielson. I, I, I don't get it. Claudio and Brian are coup de live. They're both in the Blackpool Combat Club. I totally get that. But yo, you just lost your title. You lost your title. Why are you focused on helping them out? We only see you one time in the entire show. Don't you want your Ring of Honor World Championship back? Make it make sense. Brian Danielson won against Matt Menard with a submission. Not surprised. So this whole MJF and Wheeler Yuta promo. Now, I feel like this was the only, and I'm saying this right now, with their whole newfound feud with one another, I feel like there was no other way to do how they did that on Wednesday because, and let me explain what I'm saying. Wheeler Yuta is a Philadelphian, right? He's in, he was in Philadelphia. So people are gonna cheer for him. Of course, there are gonna be some, you know, MJF simps out there saying, you know, shut the F up or F you. Or, you know, haters, toxic wrestling fans who, I'm not talking about all y'all, I'm just talking about some of y'all, toxic wrestling fans, but you know, I'm gonna save that for another video. Let me get off my soapbox. But anyway, it was genius to have Wheeler and MJF go at it in Philadelphia because I feel like this was one of the only ways that a crowd was going to boo MJF because as we can see, ever since this dude came back, everyone went off. There was a humongous pop. Every, like he, he could piss on every single one of those wrestling fans in the crowd and they would still cheer him. And him and Wheeler going at it in Philadelphia, they booed MJF. And I'm like, finally, like he's a heel. It's so bad when you have a 
heel that you're cheering for and a face that you're booing like that that's so butt backwards so it was cool to see my philadelphian people act right and stand by they fellow philadelphian like it was cool i was so proud of wheeler Yuta. like for real i feel like he's getting better and better on the mic and i and i really do believe that him having his feud with mjf it's only going to make him better it's only going to push him because as far as i know mjf is one of the best young wrestlers on the mic in aew even with wheeler yuda getting better and better on the mic he can never hold a candle to mjf unless he taps in to a different side and I feel like if he taps into that side he might start sounding like a heel so uh, I don't know like as a face he did a good job but you can definitely see how <laughs> imbalanced it was and how MJF he it, he won that like he he freaked that promo up like it this whole championship eliminator match I was not invested into it and I feel like the reason why is because it kind of was like thrown together to me unless I'm missing something like it's hard for me to invest in a match when there's no build up Moxley did defeat Robinson in this match what the highlight was for me was when MJF was up there near the box and Yuta came up from behind him and started beating him up like he I'm like yes uh, that is making me excited for the match between Yuta and MJF. Like I'm definitely looking forward to it. And I, that was that was a highlight for me. I feel like that was definitely well done because that was so unexpected for Wheeler to be up behind and ready to just... Then the AEW officials had to come break it up. And then Yuta is hitting on the officials. And I'm just like, is he going to get fined for that or what? Like he's starting to fight people so he can get his hand on MJF. So that was pretty dope. So the next segment of the night was Soraya. She comes to the ring. She was talking about how she's nervous. And I'm like, I get it. It's been a while. So, I mean, I have grace with that. Like, come on. Like, I remember Paige being Paige. And even though Soraya is Soraya, I'm still always going to remember how she was in WWE and how how dope she is and i love the fact there's some there's some quotes that I, i'm gonna read to you guys that i was just so like it got me so excited and then i'm also going to talk to you guys about what i think about her being there after kind of like taking a step back and taking off my mark hat you know <laughs> and really analyzing what's actually going on so i love that she said i'm damaged but i'm not broken I am the revolution and of course you know AEW is officially my house so let me go back to the quote I'm damaged but I'm not broken now as you guys already know nothing has changed as far as I know wrestling channels are talking about it wrestling news is talking about it Soraya is not cleared to wrestle like that's that's a duh we all know that it's not like she woke up one day and was just like oh I can wrestle again you know what I'm saying and I know there's a lot of people out there and they have valid, I, I was having a conversation with one of my subscribers recently, like they have valid concerns about Soraya being over at AEW, like, and it makes sense. AEW wrestlers being prone to injury. It's not they're necessarily prone to injury as is they are being put in wrestling matches that are extreme and they're not taking the proper precautions to execute certain moves without damaging themselves and breaking themselves in five pieces or more. So it makes sense. And then even the whole thing with like what happened on um, Dynamite Grand Slam this past Friday with Julia Hart falling into the table and it was all wrong like the only thing that hit the table was her butt and her legs and then the rest of her especially her head hit the ground and hit the barricade like it was a nasty fall and people seeing that and being scared and worried about Soraya getting back into the ring and wrestling and something like that happening to her especially with her neck 
injury and everything that's happened to her when she was at WWE. So I get that, but at the same time, after thinking about it, what it boils down to is Soraya is going to have to be responsible for her own health for her own career. And I'm trying to give Soraya the benefit of the doubt. She's been injured twice. She got injured the first time at WWE. And then she healed and was thinking she's all good. And then she got re-injured again. And then after that, it was just like, nope, nope, you're not wrestling anymore. You're not being cleared. Nope, you're not medically cleared. She's been through that. And I would think that she would have her health in mind and her own best interests at heart. And that coming to the table and being signed to AEW and having those conversations with Tony, that she would put her health first. And that she's smart enough to take into account her health and make sure that she's good. And Tony wanting Soraya to be at AEW, she, that he'll do whatever it takes to make sure that she's good. You know what I'm saying? So all that to say, I am giving Soraya the benefit of the doubt and thinking this girl is not going to be wrestling. This is what I. This is what I'm thinking. She's not in AEW to wrestle necessarily, especially with her health. I'm not thinking that she is. Now, I mean, I might be proven wrong. And if I am, um, then I'll start worrying. But as far as I know, based off of what happened on Dynamite, I feel like she's less of a actual like in ring competitor and more of a, I'm going to be building up the women's division. I'm going to be helping and being in Tony's ear to build this AEW women's division up to be better than it is right now. So that is what I'm hoping because I mean, it kind of, it was kind of showcased on it on Wednesday where um, she invited some of the AEW women to come out and she was talking about Tony Storm and how, this is the quote, this lady is finally being utilized to her full potential. This right here only adds and confirms what I'm saying that on top of that, then with the match between Serena Deeb and Tony Storm for the championship, Soraya turns it into a lumberjack match. You have these group of women around the ring. And I know some people were complaining about the fact that this segment, this match, it seemed more focused on the women around the ring versus the women in the ring. And I mean, I would agree with that, but I feel like that was the point. And you guys can disagree with me if you want to. I open disagreements, I open difference of opinions, but I mean, that was the whole point. Yes, they're having a match. And of course the whole Serena Deeb and Tony Storm match was dope. Like these two AEW wrestlers are great. They're great. I love both of them. I love both of them in the ring together. And it was great to see them in a singles match. But it was also great to see the other AEW women wrestlers out on ringside having their own story. And I loved seeing Willow um, and Jamie Hayter go at it, especially after <laughs> Sky Blue got rocked by Jamie. <laughs> she laid her out cold. I feel like that was the point of it to be more focused on the women outside of the ring as opposed to the women in the ring. Cause in the end, Tony was gonna retain the belt anyway. Duh, like Tony is not gonna take that belt off of Tony anytime soon. But I was noticing throughout this whole entire Dynamite episode that there was a lot of talking, like a lot of talking. Those These promos were long, um, especially I think the whole, uh, Jericho Appreciation Society, that was like almost like 15 minutes. That whole Ricky Starts versus Eli Isom match seemed so unnecessary. I feel like after Ricky Starks winning against Powerhouse Hobbs on the Rampage Grand Slam, like his momentum was coming back up and picking up and I feel like this match didn't really do anything for his momentum. It was so short 
and it wasn't a it was it didn't really hold any weight to me what is this for but starks did win the match the best match of the night was the main event and it was for the ring of honor world championship so it was chris jericho versus bandito bandito i hope we see more of him on aew because the man is talented like oh my gosh like he i, I had to write notes down because it, it was just fantastic like he at one point he literally held jericho up in a delayed vertical suplex for over a minute and then followed it up with a picture perfect frog splash and then he did the whole giving tribute to eddie guerrero and i'm just like yes like that was lit and then he did a freaking hurricanrana on jericho out of the ring and i'm just like this is this dude this dude is lit and it was crazy because everybody in the arena was for bandito winning like we were like i, I felt like i was there like i was just like i wanted him to win i already knew he wasn't going to win but i wanted him to win and the fact that jericho can still do a lion salt after all of these years still blows my mind and then the 21 plex that he that uh bandito did the 21 plex i went off when he did that jericho retained the ring of honor world championship and he freaking cheated he like pulled bandito's mask like over his eyeballs and then he couldn't see and then he was freaking him up then he did the like the line tamer on him and then he tapped out i'm just like jericho retained but that was the best match of the night Hands down, I don't care what you say, that was the best match, hands down. So guys, let me know what you thought about Dynamite. Let me know in the comments below. You know, I read all of you guys' comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more episodes. Thank you guys so much for watching. Signing off, bye.